manual with auto ISO. Is that the holy grail or holy fail when it comes to wildlife photography? We're gonna talk about that right after this. Welcome to the Wildlife Gallery. Join your host and fellow wildlife photographer, Doug Wallace, as we go in search of wildlife and wild places doing wild things to photograph. Welcome back, everyone. I appreciate you being here. If you're new to the channel, please consider hitting that subscribe button. If you like today's content, make sure you give it the old thumbs up. That way the YouTube algorithm will show it to more like-minded people. So when it comes to manual mode with auto ISO for wildlife photography, is that the holy grail or holy fail setting to be using? Well, I can tell you this, I personally hate manual mode with auto ISO. Now hold on, hold on, before you run off down there in the comments and start telling me how wrong I am, please allow me to plead my case so that you understand where I'm coming from. For the record, I'm not telling anyone not to use manual plus auto ISO uh, shooting mode. If you're using that mode and you're getting the results that you're wanting in the field, you should continue shooting that mode or any other mode that's delivering those results for you, regardless of what anybody else is saying. But at the same time, I think you ought to keep an open mind that there are other shooting modes, other shooting styles that might help you increase uh, your hit rate, your keeper rate, uh, improve uh, your images with a, a sharper, more detailed photographs. So who wouldn't want to continually improve as well? And the worst thing that could happen is that you try a different shooting mode or a different shooting style, and it only solidifies that the mode you had been using is the mode that's right for you. And that's all that really matters is that it's working for you right up until the time that it doesn't anymore. And that's what happened with me when it came to manual and auto ISO. You gotta also remember, as I've said in many videos, I did not get into wildlife photography until May of 22. And I started out with a Canon 90D, a 100 to 400 uh, version two lens. Then in the fall of 22, I purchased the Canon R5 that I'm filming on today. In uh, February of 23, I purchased the Holy Grail Wildlife lens, that big prime 600 millimeter F4. And I put a video out on my uh, purchase there or my uh, experience purchasing uh, that uh, wildlife lens. I'll leave it up here somewhere. You could go check it out later on after you've watched this one. But my point to bring in all that up is this, is that this is the mode that I started out with when I got into wildlife photography. And the reason being is uh, probably for the reason most people that get into wildlife photography start using this mode from the very beginning. And that's because that it's billed to us that it's a time saver in the field, that wildlife photography, that the action happens so fast and uh, we need a shortcut. And when it comes to wildlife photography, the only two settings you ought to really be worried about is your shutter and the aperture let the camera pick the ISO that is needed to get you that perfect exposure triangle there. ISO is not an artistic uh, or has no artistic value when it comes to your wildlife images anyways. So none of us want to miss a shot out there in the field. We want things as easy as they can be. So I think that's the reason most of us get into using that mode. I know it's the reason I got into that mode. When it comes to manual plus auto ISO, for those out there that may not know, what you're doing is setting your aperture. You choose what 
uh, aperture you want. You're choosing your shutter speed, but you're leaving it up to the camera to decide what the ISO value needs to be to get you uh, the perfect uh, exposure. And as far as the camera is concerned, that perfect exposure is just 18% gray, or you'll hear it referred to as metal gray. So like on a DLSR, my 90D, when I would look through there shooting that mode and I'd hit my AF on button, my light meter would show right in the middle, right on zero. And then if, you, if I was in live mode or if I, on the R5 I have a histogram, predominantly that is putting your histogram right in the middle. So as far as the camera is concerned, it's giving you the perfect exposure every time. Some of the problems I had using manual with auto ISO are these. Uh, on bright, sunshiny days, I found that the camera just extremely underexposed my photographs by one or more stops. Now, I did find on overcast days that the camera was more reliable in that shooting mode than it would be on sunny days. And I know a lot of people out there are going to say, well, it's okay that uh, your images are underexposed. You can always bring that back in post-processing. Well, that is true, but what I also found out with underexposed images is that they lack the sharpness and detail that I seen in other people's photographs. So the, the couple of things I could never bring back in post-processing is the sharpness and the detail. Now, I know there's, uh, uh, you know, AI stuff out there that will allow you to do that in post-processing, but... To tell you the truth, I would just uh, prefer to get that right in camera to begin with. Another thing that I found out with this shooting mode is this. Shooting things, uh, photographing things like bald eagles or belted kingfishers, uh, animals or birds that have white and black feathers on them, without fail, nearly every time uh, the camera would get it wrong, it would overexpose the whites. I'd blow my highlights, which are the whites. And then, you know, when it came to things like snow geese, well, every time it would get it wrong. It would still be way overexposed. I would, you know, there'd be no detail in those white feathers. Now, I know a lot of you out there right now that use this shooting mode or screaming at your monitor at the moment, telling me I need to input exposure compensation to make up for that. Okay, okay, well, continue to hear me out here. So this is when and where I started questioning uh, why I was using manual with auto ISO because now all of a sudden, after I had thought uh, and maybe incorrectly that this was more of a set it and forget it uh, type of shooting mode, but now all of a sudden, uh, I didn't think I needed to learn the exposure triangle. Now all of a sudden I do. I gotta learn how much compensation I need to add in or subtract depending on the species or the scene that I'm dealing with. Just left me scratching my head. And then when it dawned on me and I figured out that the only thing exposure compensation is doing for me in this shooting mode of manual plus auto ISO is either raising or lowering my ISO. And I really started scratching my head going, well, what in the heck is going on? This isn't what I thought it was uh, to be, this is not the shooting mode, or it doesn't seem to be the shooting mode, that would be the holy grail of wildlife photography. Well, you know, the other thing is when you're inputting exposure compensation, if you're shooting this direction here at a certain species and uh, light direction, and maybe you have no exposure compensation built in, and now all of a sudden you look over here, now there's a bald eagle and you turn over here to shoot. Well, your lighting's all different. The species is different. The scene is different. 
Now all of a sudden you have to quickly add in exposure compensation, negative in this case if we have that uh, bald eagle. So this is the point where I said, all right, my images are way underexposed. I don't like that. They lack the sharpness and detail that I think they should have in them. I need to find a different shooting mode or different style of shooting uh, to get me to where I am wanting to be at. So in my research, I found another shooting method or style that a lot of guys were using and uh, they use it in conjunction with full manual. And full manual just means they're still picking their aperture, their shutter speed, but they are deciding what that ISO value is. And they're using a method that is called ETTR, exposure to the right. And what you're doing there, you're basically overexposing the photograph in camera, paying attention to the histogram, because the histogram is going to tell you if you've went too far to the right and now you're blowing your whites or your highlights, or if you've went too far to the left and now you're crushing your blacks or the shadows there. But this is also where I think ISO can be an artistic setting for you because that's my float setting using the ETTR method. So going full manual, I use my ISO dial just like manual with auto ISO was doing. So depending on the species or the scene in front of me, when I hit my AF on button, I look at my histogram, make sure I'm not blowing my whites and I'm not crushing my blacks. But now I can either take the photo the way it is, I can expose it further to the right to get a brighter photo, more details, more dynamic range, or I can also go, well, I think this scene would really look good. And I do like a dark, moody type scene. Now I can just run my ISO downwards and darken that scene in camera. And then that helps me uh, to spend less time at the computer editing that uh, image the way I think it should look for me to share out there on social media. So... ETTR, exposing to the right, using your histogram, that is the setting that I settled on for me to move me away from manual and auto ISO. Now the other thing it's done for me is I am way more prepared than I was when I walked around or went and set up for uh, wildlife photography when I was in the manual and auto ISO method. I just assume camera's got this. All I got to do is find a subject and all I got to do is grab the camera, focus it and hit the shutter button. The camera's got everything else. Well, that was true until I found out that it just didn't really work as often as I wanted it to. So by using the ETTR method, going full manual, now I'm way more prepared for action than I was before because if I go out and I'm going to do birds in flight, I know that my shooting window is from here to here. So I grab the R5, the Holy Grail wildlife lens. I pre-focus, put all three of my settings in there for this point. I come over here. I pre-focus, put all my settings in for this point here. So now I'm covered. I know what that ISO value is here. I know what the ISO value should be down here. So as the bird comes into the frame and I throw up and I focus, all I got to do is reach up there with my thumb and float that ISO value, hit the shutter button, and I get my shots. So I'm more prepared and that's the other thing, I've yet to have um, action so fast that getting away from manual and auto ISO that it's cost me a shot in the field. It just simply hasn't happened. But I would also say that that probably hasn't happened because I am way more prepared than I used to be. And I do, I go out a lot of times uh, uh, before daylight. So when I go out and I get set up in my 
blind and I'm waiting on, let's say, wood ducks, as it starts getting light, and I think the R5 produces the best uh, file if my ISO is at 5,000 or below. So as blue hour comes in, I set ISO to 5,000, I set my aperture wide open, and I dial in the shutter speed that it takes to get me to expose to the right without blowing my highlights. Well, as light, as we get more light, I'm constantly changing my settings, I'm adding more shutter speed and lowering my ISO all at the same time. Now, I know a lot of you out there are going, well, good God, that seems like a whole lot more work. Yes, I'll admit that shooting full manual requires your full attention. And that means you, as the sun comes up through the day or going down of an afternoon time, you have to constantly be looking through the viewfinder, pre-focusing on something and checking your histogram and make sure that all three of your uh, settings there are getting you to where you're wanting that scene to be once something shows up in that scene uh, for you to photograph. So true, you're gonna spend more time looking through the viewfinder, but again, that's because, or it's going to make you more prepared than you would be if you were shooting an automatic mode like manual with auto ISO. The final reason for me to just go ahead and move away from manual with auto ISO are the results that I was getting. My results dramatically improved from getting away from this shooting mode, learning how to shoot full manual. We have way more time to get a photograph than what we really think. It doesn't take a half a second to change my ISO setting keep my eye on my histogram so I'm not blowing my whites or the highlights or crushing my blacks, shadows, unless I'm doing those type of things for an artistic reason. So your ISO dial, I fully believe, can be used for artistic reasons in wildlife photography. So that's why I moved away from uh, uh, manual and auto ISO. If you have comments now, run on down there to the uh, comments section. Let me know if you still use this mode, if your experiences with manual and auto ISO have been much like mine. If they have, don't overlook going full manual and implementing the ETTR method, or if you're using aperture priority, or, again, anything you use that gets you the results that you're after, that's what you should uh, be using and continue to use. So anyways, guys, if you would like, share, and subscribe, get out there, run the shutter, have fun with whatever camera brand you decide to do wildlife photography with, but be safe while you're doing so. I'm positive somebody at home would like to see you again.